So friends, we're about to see how much a jury will order Rudy Giuliani to pay to Shea Moss and Ruby Freeman for his lies, his vicious, racist, dangerous, and defamatory lies. Let's talk about that because justice matters. Hey all, Glenn Kirshner here. So friends, I attended some of Rudy Giuliani's defamation trial in federal court in Washington, D.C. It wrapped up on Thursday and the jury now has it. You may recall that the judge, Judge Beryl Howell, already decided that Rudy Giuliani lied about and defamed Shea Moss and Ruby Freeman, the two Georgia state election workers, and now the only remaining question involves damages. How much will the jury order Rudy Giuliani to pay in what's called compensatory and punitive damages for what he did to Shea Moss and Ruby Freeman? Now, I was in court and watched some of the closing arguments, and I'm going to share my personal thoughts and observations about what I saw, but let's start with the new reporting. This from NBC News, headline, Jury Deliberations Begin in Rudy Giuliani's Defamation Trial. Highlights. And that article begins, Today is the fourth day of Rudy Giuliani's civil defamation trial related to false claims he made about two former election workers in Georgia. A judge ruled this year that Giuliani, the former New York City mayor, and longtime ally of former President Donald Trump defamed Ruby Freeman and her daughter Shea Moss by baselessly accusing them of election fraud. The plaintiff's lawyer asked jurors today to award them at least $24 million each for Giuliani's defamatory statements. Witness Ashley Humphreys, a Northwestern University professor, and expert in social media testified that, based on her analysis, it would cost Freeman and Moss $17.8 million to $47.8 million to fix their reputations. In a reversal, Giuliani decided not to take the stand, and so the trial went straight into closing arguments. After both sides concluded their closing arguments, U.S. District Judge Beryl Howell dismissed the jury in the early afternoon to begin deliberating the amount in damages that Giuliani owes the plaintiffs. The jury later went home for the evening with deliberations scheduled to resume 9 a.m. on Friday. Now friends, before I share some of my thoughts and observations about what I saw during closing arguments, let's talk a little bit about what happened earlier in the week in this trial. For example, there was testimony that after Rudy Giuliani started lying about Ms. Moss and Ms. Freeman, falsely claiming they were involved in election fraud, stuffing ballot boxes down in Georgia, after he started lying about them, the FBI told them, you can't go home. It's unsafe for you to go home and you can't go home. That was the testimony. So they were forced to spend thousands of dollars on, among other things, Airbnbs, somewhere to stay after being told by the FBI they can't go home. When they could make their way back to their home, they installed a security system, spent an additional several thousand dollars trying to keep themselves safe until their home address was published online. Then they had to flee their home. Ms. Freeman testified that she is afraid to use her own name. She doesn't go out anymore, and she certainly doesn't use her own name. Ms. Freeman's testimony, interestingly, went uncross-examined. Rudy Giuliani's lawyer didn't even try to cross-examine her. You know, there was nothing 
to ask. There was nothing to correct. There was nothing to put in context about the extreme pain, suffering, fear, anguish, and harm to her reputation that Ruby Freeman suffered at the hands of Rudy Giuliani's vile, racist, defamatory lies. So the testimony of Ms. Freeman, having gone uncross-examined, sat with the jurors completely unrebutted, uncontradicted. And then Rudy, who had been boasting about how he was going to testify, he punked out, coward that he is, and decided not to testify at the last minute. Now, friends, let me share a little bit of what I saw in court during closing arguments. Ms. Moss and Ms. Freeman's lawyer argued to the jury that even after Rudy Giuliani admitted that he lied about and defamed the plaintiffs, Ms. Moss and Ms. Freeman, and he did that formally in what's called a stipulation where he agreed in writing in a document filed with the court that he lied about them and he defamed them even after he did that, he went on to lie about and defame them 20 more times, including on the courthouse steps during this trial. At the end of a trial day, Rudy Giuliani left the courthouse, talked to reporters, and said they were lying. They were, quote, changing votes. And the next day, Judge Beryl Howell called him on it, telling his attorney, do you realize your client just made additional defamatory statements? You know what that's like, friends? That's like somebody who's on trial for robbery, robbing someone on the way into the courthouse. That is basically what Rudy Giuliani did on trial for lying and defaming the plaintiffs and he lies and defames them again on the courthouse steps during the trial. Nobody can accuse Rudy Giuliani of learning his lesson. Also during closing arguments, the attorney for Ms. Moss and Ms. Friedman showed the jury slides about how much money Rudy Giuliani made courtesy of his lies. And friends, the plaintiff's lawyer also discussed with the jury how Rudy Giuliani called Shea Moss and Ruby Freeman drug dealers. Look at them. Look at them. They look like drug dealers passing vials of cocaine and heroin. Why do you think Rudy Giuliani said that Miss Moss and Miss Freeman look like drug dealers? If they were white women, would he have called them drug dealers? Giuliani's lies were vile, racist, dangerous, and defamatory. And the whole time, Giuliani was sitting not 15 feet away from Miss Moss and Miss Freeman, sighing, glowering, looking bored, shaking his head, and all the while pecking at his laptop computer screen with a crooked little finger. And toward the end of the plaintiff's closing argument, he asked the jurors to award compensatory damages in the amount of $24 million each, and then he turned to punitive damages. And he argued to the jury that award whatever amount of punitive damages you believe in your judgment will send the message that this is unacceptable, that this should never happen again, an amount that will deter others from doing what Rudy Giuliani did. And friends, Rudy Giuliani needs to be crushed financially by the jury award in this case, and I'm quite sure he will be. Because justice matters. Friends, as always, please stay safe, please stay tuned, and I look forward to talking with you all again tomorrow.